Well, good morning, everyone. As you can see, I'm recording this just for a change in church. And it is actually the beginning of Holy Week today. And we're going to actually be posting meditations on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday as we continue our series on those people in the crucifixion story. We're just going to be looking at different characters every day. And today we're actually thinking about probably everybody's favourite disciple, Peter. But we're going to be considering particularly a time when he really bombed spectacularly. He really messed things up in a very bad way. And of course, that's his denial. But rather than me talking to you about Peter, I'd like you to hear him telling his own story today. So just listen. This is Di Woodridge from the Bible Society, just helping us to get into the shoes of the Apostle Peter. You're the Christ. He asked us who he said he was. That's what he said. You're the Christ. You know he rode a donkey into Jerusalem, right? People laying down a procession of palm leaves for the one we'd all been waiting for. It was like one of those pinch me moments. Then Passover came. Me and the boys are tucking into the flatbread and Jesus just comes out with it. One of you dipping bread in the balsamic's gonna turn me in, he said. Then he takes the bread, tears and shares it. What are you waiting for? Tuck in, he said. This is my body, broken, beaten bruised for you then he gives thanks and passes round the red drink up he said this is my blood poured out for plenty a bit later we're up the Mount of Olives with Jesus you know when push comes to shove you're all gonna bail on me he said no chance I said the rest of the might I'm not going anywhere I said count on it he said before the night's over, you'll swear blind you don't even know me, he said. On my life, I'll never deny you. I'll die for you, I said. It all happened so fast. One minute, we're with Jesus as he's praying up Gethsemane and we're sparked out unconscious the next. They've got Jesus in handcuffs. And all they can remember is what he said. That we'll bail on him. That we'll deny him. That I'll deny him. I'm not having it, I thought. He's got it wrong, I thought. So I drew out my sword, I gripped my teeth and I let rip. I cut this guy's ear clean off. Come on, let's have it. Enough, Jesus said. As he just goes quietly and I just legged it. I tailed him till we ended up at the chief priest's place. Me, in the courtyard, outside by the fire, him, Inside, stand in trial, <laughs> trial. Witnesses fabricating fake news, trying to pin something on Jesus that would land a death penalty. You got nothing to say, they said. No defense, they said, go to him, give it to us straight. Are you the Christ, they said. I am, he said. Enough said, as the guards struck him, stripped him and spat on him. Bang! Go on! Prophesy you landed that right up, they said. Meantime, I'm warming my hands by the fire, trying to keep a low profile. Although there's only so much blending in you can do when you're watching your best mate and mentor get the living daylights kicked out of him. Hang about. I know you, the servant girl said. Must have one of those faces, I said. No, you're a... One of his lot from Nazareth, she said. Don't know what you're talking about, love, I said. I made a beeline for the exit, but now she's got a captive audience. Hey, guess who he's friends with, she said. Think she's had a bit too much of the Merlot, I said, but they won't let it go. I could see them eyeballing me, working it out in their head. Come on, mate. If you're not from Galilee, I'll eat my own sandal. On my mother's life, I've not even met the guy. The cockle crows a second time. And that's when I see him. Tossed around like a tear and share flatbread. 
broken, beaten, bruised, just like he said. And with the bottles worth of red blood smeared across his face, he looks at me. He looks right at me, right into the depths of me. And all I can remember is what I said. I'll never deny you. I'll die for you. Three times you'll deny me, Pete, he said. And I just broke down and wept. <sighs> Wasn't that fantastic? Very, very moving. And maybe it helps us uh, to really have some sympathy with Peter as we put ourselves in his shoes. Maybe it helps us just to understand how fear led him to act as he did. And the Bible tells us that having denied Jesus, Peter went out and wept bitterly. And again, we can really maybe just understand that action and the feeling he was going through. And I'm going to be showing part two of Di Wooldridge's spoken word uh, just after Easter. But just suffice it to say that Peter's story does actually have a happy ending. Whereas Judas, as we've seen earlier in this series, just went out and hung himself. Peter was actually forgiven for his failure after that meeting with Jesus on the beach. And he was recommissioned to lead the emerging church and went on to do great things for God. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. All that's to come after Easter. But maybe as we meditate on this story, as we think of the Apostle Peter, suffice it to say that his story, I think, shows us that however badly we mess up, however often we get things wrong, because of the cross, there's always that way back. There's always that new start for us all. Peter went on to do fantastic things to God. And we can as well, whatever our past. And I think for that, we can be eternally grateful. So let's pray together. Lord, we do thank you so much for Peter. And we can all associate with him in so many ways. Help us to remember that however often we mess up, you always forgive us. You always welcome us home as we commit our lives now to serving you. Amen. And so may Christ crucified give us grace to grow in holiness, to deny ourselves, to take up our cross and follow him. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. So thank you for being with us today. Uh, Carol will be here tomorrow, and she's going to be thinking of that, that scene at the cross where Jesus talks to Mary and the disciple that he loved, the Apostle John. So do tune in again tomorrow. Bye-bye.